left, we've got Steve Kundich, Vice President of Developmental Services at Digital Realty, and Mark Thompson, National Advanced Technology Market Leader of DPR Construction. You may know Steve is responsible for driving continuous improvement, innovation, and collaboration into, into digital's design and delivery process, drawing on VDC, IPD, Integrated Project Delivery, and design and lean LinkedIn principles. Page. What you may not know is he has an affinity for classic roadsters and is a proud owner of a 1979 MGB. Mark leads the National Advanced Technology Group for DPR Construction, one of the country's top technical builders, the third largest data center and telecommunications contractor in the nation. He's also a former rugby player for the Santa Barbara Grunions. The topic of this, of this next presentation is scalable, <laughs> is containerized, and prefabricated <laughs> modular component solutions. Gentlemen. Thanks. Thanks, Jack. <clears throat> Ah, perfect. Okay, um, thanks for having us here today. I'm Mark Thompson, and um, I, I started working with Steve Kundich in 1998. Uh, we've been doing uh, design build work together in some way, shape, or form for almost 15 years now. Uh, we started off in the microelectronics industry in the Bay Area, and in 2005, Steve started with Digital Realty 2004. We started building data centers in uh, California and Santa Clara. And since that time, we've done uh, projects in Arizona, Texas, Virginia, Georgia, New yeah. Jersey. Um, I, think, I think I got them all. Yeah, there. that's yeah. Good, good range. I know Mark yeah. and I, like you said, we kind of go way back and uh, started out with him when he was an MEP coordinator and we were kind of slogging through semiconductor and other projects and then uh, moving into the data center builds. It's been uh, a good experience with a lot of the folks at DPR and sort of their thinking and how they approach the design, procurement, and delivery of data centers and some of the, the other types of uh, innovations that we can bring to the build. So it'll be good to talk about modular today and um, cover off on a few things that, that uh, haven't changed and, and how it can uh, affect our thinking and applying these technologies to data center projects. So it's, it's a very exciting time right now in, in design and construction. Uh, there's, there are advances in building information modeling and integrated project delivery and uh, BIM. A lot of lean thinking making its way into lean, the design, yep. procurement, and delivery, so great um, tools. The, the modular deployments are, are an offshoot of, uh, of the BIM and the, and the IPD where we're getting the, the engineering folks involved early with, uh, with fabricators and the <coughs> supply chain and the, the vendors that are actually installing the work, the electrical and mechanical and, yep, and absolutely. general contractors as well. Uh, we're gonna hit on um, modular today, and basically um, we're gonna be talking about the, the, the higher stakes that are gonna be, uh, that are hitting all of the industry right now with with modular, with all these great ways that we're delivering construction. Yeah, and I think, you know, it's like Jason was talking about a bit, a bit too, you know, a lot of owners and, and folks out there are looking for ways to reduce cost, improve efficiency, um, and, and come up with a better way of designing, delivering, and deploying data centers. And I think that's, you know, part of those higher stakes. People are seeing these, these large costs and, and challenge, you know, challenging it and saying there's got to be better ways to do it. So um, yep. with that. Yeah. So um, there's, there's more knowledge out there. There's, uh, you still need vendors, though, with, with the core competency around the mission critical uh, uh, design and construction. Yeah, and I think that's a, a real important takeaway for a lot of people to, to realize. I mean, it's, uh, it's challenging with all the different types of product offerings and, and different approaches. I think it's good to kind of drill down into what is the structure of the team, what are their core competencies, and how is that going to also contribute to the success of the project. And we're going to hit on today, um, you know, containers. It, as, as we're talking about modular, it's really as sort of digital's model, which is uh, the building blocks, I think, kind of the hybrid that, that Jason had talked about. Yeah. Containers, uh, power skids, cooling skids. Uh, we're going to kind of hit, and then fully modular data center. So we're going to, everything that we're talking about sort of applies to kind of all of that, that, that Stu, as yeah. Steve calls it. Yeah. So current status of modular marketing, you know, there, there's just a lot of different messagings out there. And I think, you know, it kind of can sum it up as mine goes to 11, <laughs> right? Um, and probably the better way now, you know, I was thinking about Spinal Tap, if you guys are familiar with that, right? Instead of 10, mine goes to 11. Really, for us in the industry right now, it's more, you know, my PUE. 
is point, you know, 1.01, or I'm waiting for the next one to be announced, that's 0.995. Right, right. Five-minute abs. Yeah, five-minute abs, right. same thing. So, so, um, so, <laughs> so the, some of the points that we're going to drive home today is modular is a tool, and it's a, it's sort of an arrow in the quiver for design and construction, delivering data centers, but it's it's not magic, and there's still yeah. a lot of core competencies that we're going to be talking about that your team still need to have to be able to deliver modular data centers. Yeah, it's definitely part of the part of the puzzle, <laughs> and um, I think as we run through some of these. Uh, items around speed, cost, reliability, efficiency. Um, it certainly has a place in that, but there, you know, as we all know, there's a lot of architects and engineers in the room that there's definitely other considerations that we should always keep in mind. So some of the, some of the myths and truths, and um, it, it, one of them is that modular is always cheaper. And I think some things that we want to talk about here, or you know, this is the, the Yahoo Compute Coop in uh, upstate New York. And I would, I would argue that this pre-manufactured metal building here at $50 a square foot uh, for, the, for the structure is a, is a pretty efficient way to build your white space um, versus you know, 12 by 50 modules uh, at 600, 600 square foot a clip that are $150 a square foot. So there's, these are much more robust structurally. They've got to be able to... Yeah. Ship them. They've got to be able to grab them with a crane. So they're 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 very heavy structures. There are applications where modular is definitely uh, cheaper, and this this could still be a good way to go, but it's not necessarily always the cheapest route. Absolutely. So you know, some of the data like we've seen from uh, the tier one, the the idea of twenty percent lower cost and such, um, definitely. You know, as more of those economics come in and we learn about it, there can be some savings there. I think one of the things we wanted to point out was within the rest of the sort of project uh, team and ecosystem, I think go next, um, there really are, in addition, you know, modular and the factory production on certain elements and pieces of the data center can lower the cost. But the other thing that you can think about as you're deploying a, a data center project or a program of projects, and especially if you're you know, looking at uh, numerous projects and repeatability is, we've done some efficiency studies as you optimize a team on a series of jobs. This represents you know, six or seven data center projects over say a 12 to 14 month period, deployed in pods, very consistent design, and there's a few outliers. You know, sometimes you have some overtime or some other considerations based on schedule. But you know, the, the basic trend is pretty clear where you come from you know, say 14 man hour per KW down to 10, 38% savings, thereabouts, something like that if you did the math. Right. So and you this, go through this on M&E side. And, and this, is, this is deploying a traditional bricks stick and built. mortar stick with, with, a, with a consistent team, with a consistent design, with a consistent supply chain, right? right? Um, so so these, things, these things can be achieved. Modular can help bring this down even further but some of the points that we're trying to get across today is there, there are these, these core competencies and, and sort of factors that, that we just can't avoid. Um, Big part of the success of a build or a data center program. Right. So we've got, uh, you know, every, every presentation needs to have their, their pie chart, so we have our pie chart. And um, I, everybody's uh, probably pretty familiar with this, but I think the, the, the key point here that, we're, that we want to get across with this is that you know fully a third of your data center project cost is going to be in capital equipment, and that yeah. whether it's going into a module or it's going into a stick built facility, you're going to spend a third on on that equipment. So, um, the the opportunities per se to to really save with modular are are in some of these electrical labor, mechanical labor, but still, electrical subcontractors got a lot of commodities to buy. Just as you would on a module, you'd still be buying copper, right? So you still have these commodities that you're going to buy. So there's labor in here that we can get more efficient with working in a factory environment, but the, the, it's not going to it's not going to necessarily lap a third of your cost off of your job just because you've decided to go modular. And I think in a bit we'll we'll show a, a schedule slide and kind of tie these things these two things together from. Uh, you know, it really has a lot to do with how soon you can complete design, pick up the pencil, and pre-order things too, and then you can realize even more savings. Right. 
And in fact, that kind of leads into that. It really is, you know, can you pick up the pencils? Can you get the early decision making done on the project in order to take advantage of the modular building? I know from our experience, um, we've been pretty consistent about the things that we've deployed. And to be able to pre-purchase the equipment early, uh, solidify your design early, <coughs> and not change it is going to be super key to the success. And then you can wind up paralleling things, save some time, and that's money. So. Can you do it? You know, I mean, that is the big point. Um, so then, then we get into the, the the schedule aspects of it. And is it is it always faster? And this is a pretty busy slide, but but bear with me here. Um, the traditional construction. I had another. I had yet another uh, series of uh, schedule activities for a traditional sort of stick build, and it actually looked very similar to the top line here. Um, you know, you're, you're still going to have you're still going to have a design period. That 30% of the cost is also manifests itself in a large bar for your equipment procurement. Um, so we got to get our design done. We got to get our procurement underway. Now we can add in some modular fabrication into it. And sure, this bar might be able to slide back. But there is some point of time that needs to, to occur after the final piece of equipment is delivered. So, so the point that we're trying to make here, um, a couple, is uh, with this customer commitment here. And this could be an internal customer. This could be, in a case of a digital realty, someone signing a lease. Um, this, is, this is when you get your funding approved. And typically, this is what we see happening, right? No, nobody's really going out there and, and pre-purchasing uh, a lot of equipment and modules. Um, and that's, that's kind of the timeline you get out of that. Now, where we can really save a lot of time here is if we, prior to this customer uh, commitment, commission someone to do some design, go out and procure all of our capital equipment, get it to a fabricator, then we just have to do a little bit of site fit design. Yeah, kind of call that localization. Right, yep. right. And you know our construction period's cut down a little bit here because we've done all our good module work. Yeah. And our commissioning period, I'd, I'd say, is about the same. but. Yeah. You know, the, the, the fact is, from this point right here, we're talking, you know, a third of the time potentially could be cut out. So yeah. modular definitely has some applications. But, Steve, if you, if you were to go out and buy, say, 10 megawatts worth of capital equipment for data centers, what, yeah. would, what would that spend be? No, it'd be, I mean, we're, we're probably, you know, in the 20s to 30 millions of pre-committed equipment purchases up front prior to us either internally committing as our own customer when we speculatively build or waiting for the customer to come. So, you know, there's, there's kind of a massive commitment there. And, and what's interesting is as we look at these different modular solutions and the, the providers that are out there, and some of them are here in the room, is, you know, I think it'll take time as, you know, some of what Jason has pointed out where there might be some standardized designs or design approaches that could be accepted by the market. But, Who's going to go buy 30 million worth of switchgear, UPSs, distribution, on spec, prior to the customer commitment to be ready to go to you know obtain that time savings? So, I think it's a, an interesting point, and uh, there might be a few a folks that do it. There's yeah. a lot of speculation in there, and going back to the pie chart again, this would probably amount to 40 percent of your project before you know. Yeah, especially when you throw in the fabrication. Right. Yeah. Right, so that's that's a that's a key point to to modular. Yeah, Gary. So this obviously works for digital realty. It's not just work for someone who's not building multiple data centers, unless you yeah. have someone like Snyder decides to build a modular unit that they're going to sell as part of their data set catalog. Package. Exactly, and they they do it up front. And so I think maybe the big leap there is, and it'd be interesting to see what some people's take is. You know, there was AP, APC infrastructure, which kind of in the room stuff, but you know. I don't know, is it a 500 kW load block or a 1,000 kW load block? Are people going to start to pre-procure and pre-build those product and then you know, be ready to go when the order comes and then deploy it in 16 weeks? In, in 1999, 2000, 2001, when, when, when the, the dot-com was, was blowing up, right, everybody was speculating on you know, what, what pets.com or, or I don't know, whatever, all these websites, all this speculation, build, build, build. And, and after everything sort of cratered, right, 2005, this, this kind of speculation really stopped. And it wasn't, people weren't ordering and buying really until they had someone that was credit worthy 
sign it on the dotted line. And, and I, so I think, you know, uh, real estate developers and such, I mean, you're in the business of, you know, taking some risks. So a company like ours will pre-procure and do some of this stuff. And I think that's definitely, you know, the modular can drive some advantages into that. I think for us as sort of a, you know, AEC community and working with sort of one-off customers, the kind of one and done group, or maybe they have a program of two or three builds, to really take advantage of those different modular products that are out there, whether it's the IT container or the skidding of electrical or what have you, it really does front end load the decision making, I think. And they do need to commit to some chunk of capital up front to really gain that benefit. And I think you need to draw on some of those other tools about how you put the team together, sort of you know, integrated sort of team and uh, project behaviors and how you buy it out is going to be just as important as the sort of modular tools that you have. It's how you contract for it, how you put that, that group together. Because it's really not a one-stop shop yet. So schedule performance, yeah, definitely, um, you know, the, the things to point out are that the entitlements and the upfront work that needs to get done to procure power, to get um, entitlements in place. You know, at digital right now, we're seeing even longer cycle times to, uh, to get the, uh, the planning approvals and the entitlements, and uh, it's definitely a factor that has to be considered. So it kind of comes back to how do we normalize, you know, these things about cost and schedule performance. Um, we've spent a bit of time already on the repeatability design and really doesn't even need to be repeatable. You just need to pick up the pencil if you want to release the stuff and go. Right. Um, and we've talked, you know, about the team and how that uh, can really have an effect. Yeah, that, and that's, I mean, that goes back to, you know, having your, having, having good design shops, having a, having a good uh, uh, contractor, having good M&E partners, um, but really having a good mastery of your supply chain, right? There's there's yeah. there's just certain things that, uh, whether it's modular or stick built, they're they're just they're just facts. Sort of the, have to be. There's a lot that hasn't changed. Right. Yeah. So modular alone is not is just is not going to um, is not going to guarantee that your program is successful. All these other sort of fundamentals need to be in place. Yeah. Reliability. Um, Interesting kind of, uh, kind of point. Um, really, you know, we've seen a lot of, uh, in our business, with sort of always from the beginning being standardized and repeatable designs, that leads to a level of consistency that's really helped us with our operation team and such. Um, you know, again, I think it comes, it's just back to kind of recycling those same points around the, the design and, and the consistency across the project, uh, whether it's stick built or modular you can definitely you know, achieve those advantages either way. And, and I would say um, as the industry accepts more of these standardized designs, that, that is going to help because I think people might start to understand what you know, this particular package is or this particular approach is. Right. And so, uh, yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is my favorite slide because um, I think a lot of people believe that just because they're getting something built in a factory that it's going to be higher quality than something that you can get stick built. And the fact is, without, without solid production, without solid quality control, without solid um, design, you're, you're going you're gonna to end up with something like this. Or you could. So it's just not automatic. And that's, that's, a, that's a big point. Yeah, and we've, we've seen it even with some of our, <coughs> our builds. I mean, as we've done the, the, the prepackaged sort of M&E pieces, there's a lot of details and a lot of things to define, and you got to go through a progression, and they, they get better as you go. You know, the first ones show up and like, oh, I didn't really know you were going to route it this way, or that's too close to this, that, or the other. So it's, uh, um, you definitely have to have some good mentality around the, the production controls and, and how it's coming together. And uh, it's, it's very easy, um, I was saying to Steve, it's, it's very easy to put a, a neat BIM model together and, and go sell something modular, it's, it's, it's entirely another process to have a solid factory that, that understands quality control, that has people that have done this over and over. Um, it's, it's, it's huge as far yeah. as reliability and quality go. So then the, the efficiency, um, we, would, we would argue that the, the efficiency is going to be totally dependent or very dependent on Location, location. Right. huge, and it'll be interesting to see some uh, ID groups presentation later on PUE. I mean, we've spent so much time lately looking at PUE, 
at digital and looking at our designs. We've had a, a couple different designs that we've deployed widely. Now we're looking at alternates on those to gain more efficiency on the projects. And um, you know, with modular being a big part about what we do, it still comes down to the location. It comes down to the SLA and the, the, you know, the ASHRAE window that the customer is willing to accept and the customer install piece. So um, it'll be, you know, again, you, you kind of come back to these claims and you know, some people will wind up saying, oh, if I do a modular data center, I'll be below 1.2 in you know, some hot, humid climate. And uh, I'm an architect that knows a little bit about mechanical stuff, but I just keep scratching my head and saying, well, if you're not getting outside air in there, um, or, or, you know, the, the delta T across the servers and the temperature inside the box is going to be 100. And, and maybe certain servers can take it, but there's still a, a raft of legacy equipment and other applications that customers need to support. And I suppose the supporting point would be, you know, maybe w obviously with the modular, you could wind up with different rooms or environments to take care of the legacy stuff. But uh, just from a blanket statement, um, this kind of stuff isn't going to go away. I mean, you well, need to be in a, a good. Just, just to touch on the on the humidity piece a little bit, that you know, ASHRAE's windows expanding, and the the hardware IT hardware vendors are are starting to expand their window as well, and say that their equipment will operate in these higher humidity environments. And and I would just say that you know, a designer can design it, and uh, the the equipment hardware vendors will can support it, and. You have to really ask yourself: Are you are you prepared to uh, operate inside a, a hot, humid data center? And there are a lot of issues with humidity that um, uh, cause corrosion. There's just there's a lot of issues around it that you really need to think twice about how you're going to deal with that if if you're just sort of chasing that low low PUE yeah. and, and and how that stuff is going to affect how your data center operates. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So. It's evolving. I mean, we all know there's there's a number of opportunities out there for all of us to draw on and take advantage of to, you know, either as a customer or to satisfy our end user needs. But there's still a lot that hasn't changed, right? Yeah. Um, this is uh, the the piece of the puzzle, right? There's there's again the supply chain, the the design, the the scheduling and planning, the 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 detailing. issues. Right, yep. the permitting, the site entitlements, that, that modular is definitely a piece of all this and can certainly enhance your, your d design and delivery times. Yeah, but definitely again, a part of the success factors yes. that you could pull in for it's sure. Definitely a, a piece yeah. of it. So what we're, what we're proposing here is, a, is kind of a shift in thinking from, um, you know, modular versus traditional to more of how can, how's modular gonna help me with my entire program and achieving my goals? Yeah. And it's, it's uh, yeah, it's, it's not one or the other, but how are we gonna, how are we gonna fit that into the, into the piece of the Yeah, puzzle? and to keep in mind, you know, throughout the entirety of a project and the program of a project, you know, from, from the site procurement all the way through to the commissioning, module will slot in there and offer some advantages but there's still a, a number of things and, and core competencies that you have to have across the team. And uh, you know, we may see in our lifetime some company <coughs> integrate and be able to provide that end-to-end -end piece, but I think it would, we'd all do well to focus on always trying to put together a, a good high-performing team that has those, those competencies and those skill sets that can help you out end-to-end -end on the job. And then the other big thing is just this idea of early procurement and, and you know, can you finalize design? Can you get that early procurement piece done and make those commitments well ahead of your build program? And I think that's where you know, ultimately you'll get that schedule success. That's, the, that's, that's definitely the, the big dollar issue there is, is making that commitment. Yeah. You can really save a lot if you do that. So uh, thank you very much. Any, any questions? Uh, we'll start over here since Gary's gone. <laughs> Yeah, I think, um, you know, for me as an architect, things have really, oh, the, the question was that I mentioned some things about lean design principles or utilizing lean in the design procurement and delivery of projects. It's been really interesting in like the seven years that I've been at digital because we've kind of designed a process to design, procure, and deliver our data centers. And we're all familiar with sort of standard, you know, schematic design, design development, et cetera, et cetera. Well, I think 
for us, and you know, that's why you gotta be, you know, we have our program, and I think the message to, to folks is that whether it's a one-off project or a series of projects, you do well to spend a lot of time up front designing how you're gonna design, procure, deliver, commission your project, and you don't necessarily need to follow all the traditional steps. So um, we have something we call our gating process, and that works well for us. Um, and I know from, I haven't done a lot of hospital work and other things, but these idea of integrated project teams, you know, bringing suppliers in early, you can work contracts to your advantage to have good cost control, but get that expertise earlier. And then as a team, look at how you pull that, those sequences and those milestones together, and you can rethink that, and it's, uh, it can lead to huge advantages. And I think it's like that cost study. Um, we repeated with the M&E contractors, we only showed the E, but you know you can take 30% out of a job as you go through a series of repeatable projects as people get familiar with it or more, and uh, you throw the module in with that, and it can be you know epically ad advantageous. So just to uh, pile on a little bit, that that the that study that we did in Ashburn um, to show how we were we were driving more productivity and cost down using the same team included um, ID Group. Uh, Digital Realty, DPR, we had uh, Power, Solutions. Power Solutions and uh, Bowers on the team, and we, we all, were all at the table together um, well before the, the, the build cycle was starting. And, and what we were, I, I can just remember um, one of our goals was just really to extract from, from the designer's head exactly what he wanted to get it right into fabrication. That was our whole goal, was just to go right from what's in your head right to that CNC machine so that, so that we, we're minimizing the steps in between. Yeah. And by doing that, we, we ended up with less duplication of effort. They weren't drawing things that we were gonna redraw, right? We were, we were getting BIM models that weren't taken to a level of detail by ID, spending hours and hours and hours um, that, that a detailer was gonna redo anyhow. So, yeah. That was just on the upfront piece, that's how that, that lean yeah. works. And, and I think it's just a day to day. The way I like to think about it is, and, and that's why modular is so cool, is we really should think about a project team and a, and a project as a production system. So whether you got the, the modular piece or not, try and <coughs> see how you put the team together and think about it as a production system. And you can get some big gains. You throw the modular in and it's gonna get even better. And you know, down the road, you know, being an architect, if I can eliminate shop drawings on a project and just have that continuous flow through, I, I think that's you know somewhere where we'd want to be in the next five years. Uh, next. So isn't that more or less the, the traditional design build process as opposed to design for build? You know, it, it is. I mean, it's it's funny as some of these new like words have been thrown around about lean and IPD, you know, integrated project delivery, et cetera. I mean, I kind of started my career in design build, so I was always like, so, so what's different about that? Um, there can be contract, you know, structural, you know, shared risk reward contracts and other things, but I, I think it is true to a, a design build kind of mentality. I mean, there's a lot of nuance, but. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I, think it, I think it's also just, a, I think it's just becoming more collaborative. I think there's, there's been more silos in the past. Yeah, I think it's I probably. I just think it's just everybody's yeah. coming to the table sooner with, you know, just sort of, you know, here's, here's what I need to get this done. And I just think there's more of a collaborative, open attitude about everybody's got to be successful, Yeah. you know? And some of the tools like BIM and other things, as long as you, you know, target it the right place, you can go a little crazy with it, but that can, you know, really get the team to work better together and, and uh, achieve that. Gary. Yeah, you know, um, right now I think our perspective is it's been kind of cost neutral, and, and that's where, you know, a few years, a couple years ago when we got started on this, we've done, I think, seven rooms now. Um, so, you know, in, in, in sort of utility load, it's like 14 mega utility load. Um, it was really a time savings thing, and we're seeing those numbers come down as we order more, and I think that's kind of that big point, you know, with the schedule piece too, that. Um, you got to do that early procurement and buy that equipment. I mean, we have probably 12 electrical rooms delivering, you know, 1125 kW to the floor on order right now for various projects. It's a huge capital commitment. Um, and you start to see those savings as the, you know, the quantities go up. So, um, absolutely, because you're paralleling the activities for certain. Yep. Yeah. Jack? Yeah. Are you looking at commissioning 
that's hidden. I mean, that happens in the factory, it's all in cyber. Where, where does the, the, the line get? I mean, for, for us right now, I think you're up to just individual component tests. Um, down the road, you know, I, you could envision if it makes sense to have a two meg load bank at the place of fabrication, you know, a generator, and you could, you know, really put it through its test on load. But we've done sort of simple, right, Rich, kind of PLC control tests. Uh, you know, obviously all the torquing and, you know, some basics on the individual ones, but we haven't gotten to the point where you could, you know, do a full, even a level four, you know, individual system test. Haven't gotten to that point yet. We, we basically test everything twice. We do it in the factory and then, it, and, and, yeah. and it's really how comfortable is everybody that that, that factory test has, is, is indicative of how this system is going to operate after it's been taken apart put on a truck and put back yeah, together. Yeah, especially with the truck right. piece, because that was, you know, kind of the early ones. It's like, well, how's it going to do over the road? You know, we had all these arguments. Well, they ship the UPS on the road and it gets there safe. Now it's just on another, you know, piece of material and everything's worked out fine, but you, you do want to kind of double check, you know, as you go through. Yeah, I think that'd be like the size of an airplane hangar or something, right? Yeah, <laughs> no, we have, you go, go rent the sun. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that, right. that would be the thing. I mean, I think if it's a, a data center delivering 1,000 kW, you could probably get, you know, a test done, but you wouldn't be able, to, it'd be interesting to see if someone can eventually simulate that, that sort of range of environmental conditions there. I mean, for us right now, the idea maybe would be, oh, should we put a load bank there and, you know, take yeah. No, I, I mean you, it's hard to put, it's hard put to two, test two megs on the switch gear at the factory. <laughs> hard, hard to test an, an outside air evap system in in winter time, right? I mean, yeah. whether no matter where you're at, and if, if it's 500 kW or five megs, yeah. it's uh, it's hard to simulate those outside yeah, air conditions. Yeah, definitely. Anything else? But maybe we can build a virtual model and um, run the climate through it that way. I mean, I'm sure someone's figuring that out yeah, or has. Yeah. I've seen those. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. That's why, I mean, it's for all of us, I think this is kind of a progression, right? And it's these incremental steps. And, you know, the things that I've seen, you, you start off by integrating some equipment on the skids, and then you can start to layer in some other things. You know, can the controls contractor get there and fit that piece out and, you know, do some certain tests, and you'll, you'll see what add, and I, and I think it's about thinking about what adds value. And, uh, there's going to be a number of approaches. No, no singular approach is right, but you know, in, in my mind, I think it's probably a hybrid ultimately because there's still a lot to do with site work and underground and putting a building there. And most owners want a certain level of robustness in the building. And so not every building can be in a place that's free of a lot of natural hazards. I mean, there's some level of wind loads and uplifts and things like that that's always, you know, and seismic and other things that you'll have very efficient hybrid designs where you're putting things on the site and building certain things there or doing as much, you know, keeping it to an assembly level. And then you have a lot of these modular IT containers or M&E components that can slot in and, and support it and sort of my view of the future. It's, I mean, it's very exciting. I mean, it really yeah. is. It's for the first time, I think, in, you know, 100 years, we're, the construction industry is really starting to see some better productivity and, and buy by, by yeah. melding this, this factory, you know, assembly sort of mentality into what we're building at the site is, it's really, it's really heading in the right direction. Yeah, that's and I think great. that's the key thing, like you said, the, the productivity stuff, there's been so much studies done and there's new ways of working together and other tools available in addition to modular that we should look at it holistically and take advantage of that. So. Anybody else? Thank you. Thanks. Thank <laughs> you.